I live and work in Troitsk, uh, which is 20 kilometers as a suburb of Moscow, a so-called scientific city, uh, with different institutions of Academy of Science. And I have been there 35 years now, living in, in I come originally from Estonia, but uh, last uh, 35 years I have lived and worked in Russia. So I will speak in the following way. First, I make an introduction about laser therapy, lead therapy, all those uh, things. Um, I, I think maybe. Uh, many things you know, but anyway, I think it is useful uh, to repeat. And uh, then this is the main part of um, my lecture. I will speak about direct effects on cells. I will speak about uh, how uh, this, there was found that cytochrome C oxidase is a primary photoacceptor and all those things connected with mechanism of that. And uh, very shortly in the end, um, about uh, possibilities to acti activate one type of cells uh, via other. So what is phototherapy? First of all, I should say that uh, the word phototherapy, uh, uh, it is all the same when you uh, speak about laser uh, therapy or about photobiomodulation or what else, laser therapy. Uh, people use also LLLT, for example. Uh, in principle, it is the same thing. But uh, in historically, there have been uh, s some words used for um, uh, this field of um, uh, science. So, and here you see some examples uh, which uh, 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 describe how the, this light is used. Uh, of course, this uh, healing of indolent wounds and trophic ulcers. This is a classical part of, of this science. Regeneration, repair of optic and sci 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 sciatic nerves, for example. Uh, this is direct ir radiation um, with lasers of LEDs. But um, there is a field radiation of acupuncture points. For example, they use the same type of lasers. I will not speak about this. This is different science. And uh, there is also science like irradiation of blood. It was very popular in 60s, 70s. They uh, just uh, irradiate directly, or they took um, out some portion of blood, irradiate, and um, infuse it back. So now we can see what uh, kind of uh, light is used for that usually. This you see, this is a huge scale of every type of electromagnetic irradiations. And we will not speak about this, but I just want to give you uh, uh, some idea uh, that uh, this is a huge uh, field of electromagnetic um, radiation types, but we speak only about visible and near infrared part of optical um, range of irradiations. You see, if you look here, and uh, there are infrared or microwaves, these longer ones uh, in, uh, in, in this part, and ultraviolet and shorter, shorter comma, and uh, X-ray, and so they come to this direction. Uh, you see us comparing uh, this little part. It is very little, very narrow, as comparing um, uh, with all, all this field. And in this case, we speak about electronic excitation energies. Um, uh, this, so they, they are rather low, but not so low, for example, rotational energies or vibration, vib vibrational energies, they are lower. Uh, and the higher part uh, is uh, ionization and so on. And I repeat once more, we speak about electronic excitation energies, about uh, visible and near infrared.
that range of light. And uh, this part, I think you know, this part of, of, of optical uh, wavelengths, is, it consists more or less violet, blue, green, yellow, red, near infrared part. And this is really the part of wavelengths which is really important for um, laser therapy. Um, laser therapy started in 60s uh, in, in Hungary uh, with Enre Mester work and uh, at that time they used first Ravi uh, laser but most work they did with helium neon laser it is 632 0.8 nanometers, and later on nowadays uh, everybody works with semiconductor lasers or LEDs. I will speak a little bit more about this. And you can ask, ask why uh, red and near infrared light, and not not yellow or, or blue or something. And it is connected with an um, optical window of the skin, like it is called in uh, physical science. It means that there is a very narrow like window in, 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 in human skin or human body. It is just this part of wavelengths from, let's say, 500 till 1,000 nanometers. And this is really the part used in laser therapy also because the penetration depth is uh, most deep, possibly deeper in, in, in this region. You see uh, absorption of water, it is in very short wavelengths or, or very long wavelengths. There is no absorption of water here in this part. Uh, there is no absorption of proteins in, in, in this part. It is only in ultraviolet. And uh, hemoglobin is absorbing, uh, it, it is absorbing, but not so heavily like in, in other part of optical spectrum. And the only mm, strong absorber is melanin, uh, but uh, yeah, there is difficulties when uh, one irradiates a dark skin, uh, very dark skin, or when one irradiates uh, very white, very um, like in northern countries, people. And uh, laser therapy works better in northern countries than in uh, in, in in near equator equatorial part of Earth. I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, so and you see there is also uh, those classical uh, laser lines which were used helium neon laser some was there. Uh, but yeah, nowadays uh, uh, semiconductor production uh, is uh, so heavily advanced uh, that uh, pr in practical use uh, everybody use uh, LEDs and semiconductor lasers. And uh, as you know, there are, is um, a difference in construction of those devices. Uh, laser, a semiconductor laser, it contains a um, resonator, but uh, LEDs, they are not containing this. And uh, of course, to this thing, there is difference in price. But it is uh, co coherent light is not needed. I will show you a little bit later. So uh, you feel free, use LEDs. Uh, uh, also, not uh, not only semiconductor lasers. Some sometimes producers tells you, oh, laser is uh, everything, but lead is nothing. Uh, it is not true. Uh, so, uh, coming back again uh, to our problems, I will I will emphasize once more. I will speak about direct effects when there is a cell here, this green one, you irradiate, you get some activation. And most in this particular lecture, most my <coughs> examples will be connected with proliferation, redox priming of lymphocytes, for example, also, and activation of excitable cells like uh, nerves. Of course, uh, there are always, when you irradiate very complex systems, there are indirect effects via secondary messenger. Messengers, you uh, irradiate cells, but uh, 
So in some cases, you, for example, uh, in, in case of lymphocytes, uh, you, you, you get uh, products or you get reactive oxygen spaces and so on. And uh, in this uh, way, you can get activation of um, other cells also. But uh, let's speak about this part. Uh, uh, this ha I have been a uh, heavy battle, I should say, in 60s, in 70s, even in 80s, in the uh, uh, laser therapy community about importance of coherent and uh, uh, co uh, about importance of coherence of light uh, for biological effects. But nowadays, I th should say, some 10 years or so, uh, everybody believes that uh, indeed. Um, it, the biological effects are the same uh, in, uh, when you use lasers or when you use lead, when the wavelength is properly chosen or filtered or what else. And uh, uh, main therapeutic effects, they, those occur due to the light absorption. And uh, this is the most important point, and I will speak about um, those things in the next part of my lecture. Uh, and if uh, somebody uh, is interested, uh, this is all, all this uh, physical part of, of these things and in, uh, interaction uh, uh, light, uh, of light um, with cells and biotissues, it is analyzed there. Uh, the most um, uh, my work uh, has performed on cell monolayers, thin layers of cell suspension, or thin layers of uh, tissue uh, surface. Uh, and uh, uh, there, on, on, on all those um, uh, models, um, the effects of um, coherent and non-coherent light um, of the same uh, wavelengths and uh, similar toes are the same. There might be differences when you go to cheaper tissues, um, but uh, anyway, the most important thing is absorption of light. And in, in cheaper tissues, there might be some spatial coherence, coherent effects, but again, I will not uh, speak here about this. Um, though we have found now that um, this laser light uh, interaction, it is a photobiological uh, phenomenon. What does it mean, first? Uh, it means that there are, is a spatial wavelength, or there are spatial wavelengths, um, and it, th those are connected with photoacceptor molecule. And after that, there are mm, primary molecular processes inside of this molecule, or connected with this molecule. And uh, this is the main interest. It has been my main interest uh, during 20 years or so. Uh, and uh, this is a key uh, situation what explains you everything what, uh, what uh, you are doing. And of course, how this photosignal is transduced in cells, uh, this is interesting also. And uh, next I will explain this one. So we, first thing, we were in, interested in primary photoacceptors, which molecule is that which is responsible for uh, the answer. It was, it was in the 80s, I think. And it was a stark time in laser therapy. Everybody very good and look very strange things sometimes. And uh, then um, we started to record action spectra because this is a general rule in photobiological science. When you have, you don't know the photoacceptor, then you record.
action spectra. It is a graphic which re rep represents uh, some uh, photo res response. It, uh, it doesn't matter which response you record, but you have to record it um, in almost every wavelength on plus minus 10 nanometers or something like this. And uh, you, you can uh, construct this one using um, you know, wavelengths or wave number or frequency or proton, en uh, photon er energy or what else. Uh, and um, uh, this action spectroscopy uh, has been developed uh, when um, people worked with chlorophyll on all, all those um, pigments and found how those photosynthesis works, for example. I will not speak um, very uh, um, all, all the story of that. Would like to say uh, and show you some. Only this is the final, how to say, most important thing. Or all this work more than ten years or fifteen. Uh, so we uh, here those spectra I show you. They are connected with HeLa cells. This is a. Um, known uh, model uh, work. They are tumor cells, but uh, this is a radiobiological model. And everybody uh, knows when you speak about HeLa cells, aha, this is this. Uh, so and uh, when you grow your cells in a vial, uh, the oxygen uh, finishes and uh, and so and uh, this part is called uh, logarithmic phase of growth and this is plateau phase and you you see all I, I explain this for reason just to explain what it means is hila plateau and hila log lo logarithmic phase of growth and I show you here only this red and far red and near infrared part because this is an uh, important um, point in for photo by, uh, phototherapy. There is one nice peak in blue region, for example, as well, a little peak in green. But let's speak about this. And um, if you look all those five spectra, first of all, uh, look, uh, th those processes are recorded for DNA synthesis, which occur in, um, in, in cell here, and RNA synthesis, and this uh, occurs in uh, cell membranes. We measured adhesion properties of cell um, uh, so uh, here you see there are experimental points, and uh, this is made some spectroscopical uh, computerized work, so called. So in, in this case, you see the exact wavelengths um, which um, are under study, and you see uh, there are four peaks in all. Those they are different in, in, in this sense. Uh, wavelengths are practically the same, but uh, the high highness of the, the, that um, are, is different. And this this one this spinning shows you that photoacceptor must be the same in all cases. And uh, yeah, there is a little summary about those spectra. Uh, those well-structured spectra, action spectra, they certainly show that photoacceptor exists. Uh, there are some optimal wavelengths uh, which can be used in practical phototherapy, for example, uh, 620, uh, 680, 760, 820, those maxima in those action spectra. Uh, as I told, photoacceptor is suggested to be the same. Um, and uh, insofar as the measurement were performed in different parts of uh, reaction in cells, uh, it shows you that there are cellular signaling pathways. Uh, light signal is somehow moving inside of cell. 
I will not speak about this, just to mention that in parallel, we, uh, after those finding, findings, we started to work uh, modifying uh, those cellular responses, cell cellular effects with um, uh, chemicals which are very well known, which action is very well known, is some classical part of uh, photobiology, but we uh, used it in our case. And um, uh, this was a big uh, batch of um, experiments during some years. And we found um, that um, the photoacceptors must be the components of respiratory chains. And parallel, we worked with yeast, and we worked with E. coli. And in all cases, we found that, aha, this is respira respiratory chain. And uh, again, now jumping over, just um, uh, not explaining in details. You see again this nice part from green light uh, till near infrared, those four peaks, those maxima, which are optimal for laser therapy or photobiomodulation or what else, how you call it. And uh, they belong um, to the respiratory chain, they belong to cytochrome C oxidase. And uh, uh, first uh, we published about this in 95, later we uh, made a new experiments and it was advanced, all those things. And uh, then the final result is that uh, all those four peaks, they belong to copper components of cytochrome C oxidase. I will just next slide show you what it means, so-called called copper A and copper B, and, uh, but they are in different uh, state of um, uh, oxidation reduction. Some of, uh, some of them are more oxidized and some are <coughs> more re re uh, reduced. And uh, even we, we were able to propose that those two uh, far red near infrared peaks, um, 760 and 820, they are connected with TD transitions in uh, copper atom. I will not uh, tell what this means. Uh, it does mean it is uh, uh, physical meaning of this, but it means that uh, there is some excitation between uh, different energy niveaus in uh, copper. And those are uh, those two peaks, 620, 680, they are connected with charge transfer. Uh, to copper. Again, I believe me in words, I will not explain what does it mean. It, it, it is coming uh, separate lecture. Uh, inside, I, I just show you next next picture what, what it means. We are speaking now, we found that um, uh, we are dealing with respiratory chain, we are dealing with mitochondria, and um, this one, it, uh, it is just illustration, just to show you how complicated uh, structure cytochrome C oxidase has. And um, there is a protein part of molecule, very huge, and uh, it, it's, it's covered or uh, surrounds all this part. This is reaction center, catalytic center of cytochrome oxidase where the breathing process is appearing. Uh, so, uh, like biochemists are used to write it down, it, it shows you how the electrons is moving um, from using different cytochrome system. The last part is cytochrome C oxidase and there is oxidation process occurring in, in this molecule. And um, it, it looks uh, like this. So this is cytochrome C. Electrons come uh, in here. Uh, they enter the part, those copper A, and um, uh, there, there are own two uh, atoms of copper A. Uh, then do I have somebody, some, it, 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 batteries, I think batteries. 
and um, uh, yeah, uh, this uh, comes from uh, copper A. It uh, in moving to heme A, heme A three, um, and um, catalytic. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, I know. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, this is green light. Red light was <laughs> very weak for that. <laughs> and uh, this is catalytic center of um, cytochrome C oxidase. And all this oxygen chemistry occurs here. And uh, yeah, of course, in parallel, we uh, try to answer how, what, what really happened there. Uh, because after um, absorbing the light quanta, uh, we get the so-called first singlet state. And uh, after that, the reactions occur um, from, from first sing singlet um, state. Again, I will not explain what does it mean. It, it, it is energetic level of um, uh, the lowest energetic level in, in a molecule. And then we, we have historically proposed uh, different types of reactions what occur um, after irradiation. Uh, and uh, this is my favorite hypo hypothesis. And uh, this was, I think, really the first one in 88. I proposed changes in redox proper properties and acceleration of electron transfer. Uh, and of course, with that, it is uh, connected uh, nitric uh, oxy, so say it really re release from catalytic center of cytochrome C oxidase because it appeared um, that NO is a natural uh, blockator of um, uh, cytochrome C oxidase. And by light, you just uh, blow up um, those and you get activation of cytochrome C oxidase. So those two uh, are connected with changes of redox properties of cytochrome C oxidase with redox reactions. Uh, there are uh, possi possible some uh, possibil possibilities that some reactions, they, uh, of course, all those reactions appear when you irradiate cells. But uh, you, the question is, which one is uh, important? And I think in different psychological and physiological um, those uh, can be involved differently. So superoxide generation, superoxide anion hypothesis I proposed in 93, uh, uh, and uh, photodynamic action, oh, this was really the first one in the beginning of 80s. And um, when we found the um, uh, first experiment was my husband, Professor Letokov, told, oh, yeah, it's a very strange thing what they speak in quantum electronics conferences. You work with cellular cultures. You, you try that. Radiate the helium neon laser, some culture, and look what happened. Huh? We got, got increase in DNA synthesis rate. And then uh, Vladilian told, oh, this is singlet oxygen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a really the first. Of, uh, um, uh, first hypothesis, and uh, I think it works in certain cases in higher intensities, in higher doses also. And uh, this one, I think uh, this is important also depending on uh, uh, irradiation parameters, uh, changes in biochemical activity induced um, by local transient heating of chromophores. Because in every ca case of electronic excitation, you uh, get also some um, local heating. And uh, again, it depends on parameters of light you use. You can get this one as well. And um, yeah, this, as I told, was my uh, favorite one. And I still think that it is one of the most important uh, hypotheses. But to check it properly, it was very difficult. Uh, at that time, we were not able to do that. Uh, uh, but later on, 
uh, after 10 years or so we, we did this. It is based on, uh, on the knowledge that action spectrum of uh, a, a biological response, it resembles the absorption spectrum of photoacceptor molecule and uh, we understood, we know, knew this time already that it is um, uh, cytochrome C oxidase, but the right absorption spectrum in a living uh, cell monolayer, it is extremely difficult thing, uh, for just experimentally. Uh, and uh, of course, it is uh, very well known that electronic excitation of absorbing centers, it alt alters um, the redox properties of the enzyme. Uh, and then, uh, later, 10 years ago or so, in uh, cooperation of Institute of Spectroscopy in Troitsk, uh, uh, we uh, built a home, a laboratory made uh, device. Uh, uh, there was a special monochromator built for that, and uh, so, so on and so forth. It took almost 10 years, as I told. And uh, the, uh, we, we wanted to compare the action and absorption spectra in red and near infrared region, this part. And uh, we wanted to know if there is any changes in absorption spectra uh, uh, connected with irradiation. Uh, and uh, yeah, this work was mm, uh, published in uh, 205. And uh, you see, uh, there are, are only, we had a lot of them, and it, it was a very heavy uh, work uh, just to understand because all those um, connections you write, you absorb in spectra, it was very uh, difficult. But here you see three uh, spectra. This is written in enclosed cuvette. It means that oxygen concentra concentra concentration is very low. And it means that uh, your photoacceptor is in reduced state, more or less. Uh, when you open the cuvette and uh, you just measure, uh, then oxygen is coming in because, uh, and uh, the breathing is activating and uh, you see that those two spectra, they are quite different. And um, as a repair point or, 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 or control point was a triad monolayer. It is fully oxidized, uh, but um, cytochrome um, C oxidase is not functioning. Respiratory chain is not functioning because those cells are dead. And uh, by comparing and analyzing uh, those three type of um, uh, spectra, we found that there is uh, some connection, and if you use uh, those two wavelengths, uh, then uh, you can understand, you can make cal calculations which um, for form of cytochrome C oxidase is prevailing, which, which one is uh, working uh, in, in, in your culture. And uh, there you see here uh, the results, the same spectrum after irradiation, 830 nanometers. You see uh, oh, so, those are Lorentz uh, fitting points again. And uh, you see that uh, there are differences, big differences in point of view of uh, spectroscopy. And uh, comparing those two pairs of, of lines, uh, you, uh, it helps you understand what uh, irradiation is uh, doing with your object. And uh, yeah, yeah, as you, as I told, this irradiation, it um, uh, causes uh, uh, reduction of uh, cytochrome C oxidase, it means that electrons is, are coming in uh, more uh, fastly. And uh, there is a compa compar comparison with uh, action spectra here. Those were absorption spectra, as I told. And those 
are those two of those previous action spectra and the uh -huh, uh, this, um, uh, peaks are the same. And um, uh, you can, using uh, this knowledge from that experiment, you can uh, see uh, oxidation state of your enzyme after irradiation. And uh, yeah, we, we published, uh, this was, uh, I think, first, no, the first in somewhere in US, but uh, yeah, we published uh, some papers about this, and, uh, and uh, I am proud about those part, this part of experiment because it was very complicated and took a long time and so on. And um, now what are conclusions um, from this part of absorption measurements? It clearly shows that um, photons have direct stimulatory effect on cytochrome C oxidase. It means that increasing, uh, there is an increase of electron flow between heme A and uh, A3 upper B centers in cytochrome C oxidase. And this is really the rate, only rate, and limiting step in electron flow uh, in cytochrome C oxidase. And uh, when you get by irradiation past the electron flow, Inside cytochrome C oxidase, inside a re respiratory chain, you get transient reduction of the enzyme. There are more electrons inside, and uh, there are just after that um, relative oxidation occurring. And it means all this uh, thing that uh, by irradiation you get transient, not constant, transient upgrading or activation of cytochrome C oxidase. This is a real ir irradiation effect. Um, and um, uh, there is one important thing I would like to em emphasize, that um, all those measurements, they depend on the initial redox state of the enzyme. And it is very deeply connected um, with knowledge, well-known knowledge for decades among uh, therapy, laser therapy uh, community that sometimes when you irradiate, for example, indolent wounds or, or bad wounds or something, you get nice effect. But when you try uh, to increase uh, just uh, experimental wound or something, you will get any no, no effect because the re regeneration processes are coming vastly enough and you cannot uh, f increase processes in this case. But in case of bad wounds or uh, everything which is bad in organism, then you get the nice answer. But there are the borders, certain values of the radiation effect in our case uh, between 0.4 and 0.8 uh, in, 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 in this wavelength rate. Uh, when uh, well, you can do that, you cannot increase uh, processes, whatever. Uh, mm, everything is limited. And this is the most important point uh, when you argue with um, persons, I have done that in uh, this FDA officials and uh, in, in, in Russia also some officials say, oh, look, some people publish uh, papers, there are nice effects, and some publish there is nothing. And I always told them, look, you have to see what state uh, your cells or organism or, or whatever your object of irradiation is. When it, everything is working properly, then you cannot increase that. Or uh, if it is working so-so, you can do that a little bit. But when the situation is very bad, then uh, you, you can do uh, things. So now I spoke about this. And uh, what else? Some words about NO hypothesis. This have been one of my 
a favorite hypothesis for a long time uh, because as I told this is a psychological inhibitor of cytochrome C oxidase and it binds the catalytic center of cytochrome C oxidase. It is something like that. Uh, this is a catalytic center. This is copper atom here, atom, and this is um, ferrum here, and cytochrome um, uh, and NO can bind from both sides, from this side, this side, or even in, 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 in both sides. And it is very fast reaction. It, it occurs all time. And in this, this is one way how uh, the activity of cytochrome C oxidase is regulated. And uh, just my idea was that uh, by light we uh, can blow uh, away uh, somewhere, this or this, I don't know which one. And uh, in this way, we increase. Uh, the activity of uh, catalytic center of cytochrome C oxidase. But there is one other nice chemical acid, acid and it, it is when you treat your cells with that, then you get it constantly being there and forever. And uh, we made a rather big uh, series of experiments uh, treating uh, uh, cells uh, with one of um, an O and, uh, donors and sodium azide and uh, we measured action spectra here and you see this is a light action spectrum for absorption uh, for um, uh, cell membrane adhesion and when um, NO is present or when th this azide is present and uh, there are big differences and you can find out um, many things about uh, this batch of experiments. Uh, and uh, the next thing we understood here, we understood that uh, uh, respiratory chain, it is not only signal generator, it is also signal transducer. Uh, and um, uh, I don't know all, or it, it is at least one important point that uh, laser phototherapy effects occurred with the uh, re 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 blowing up and all from reaction center. And this event, this causes reverse of signaling consequences. I will speak a little bit later about uh, those, what, what does it mean. And what does it mean? It does it mean that we radiate the cell, uh, uh, respiratory uh, chains are in mitochondria, our photoacceptors are there, but we are able to measure DNA synthesis rate, for example, in nucleus, or what else? Absorption properties of cell membrane, like in, in my case, and some other things. People have measured many things, and you can ask, aha, how it works. Uh, water is absorbed there, but you measure um, the result there. And this is just uh, this one. Uh, I will a lit little bit later explain. This is so-called signaling um, transport chain. And uh, here, just I would like um, uh, to uh, mention, this is, I think, first experiment in this patch. Uh, later on, uh, in other laboratories, it was done also when uh, it appeared the new technology uh, microarray analysis, uh, you can do that uh, measuring constantly, uh, simultaneously, uh, a big amount of um, uh, gene activation. In, in, in this case, they measured almost 10,000 genes activity after irradiation uh, with 629 nanometers. And it appeared 
that one hundred more than one hundred genes of ten uh, categories it was affected were affected by radiation. And you see, for example, this one I spoke. I started my speak, speech about DNA synthesis uh, changes, transcription factors, immune uh, inflammation factors, cytokines, many of of things. And uh, yeah, I think this is first one, at least by, by my best knowledge in this field. But nowadays uh, it has done much more and. Um, and so, uh, and um, this is this is, um, is uh, this part. It is modulation uh, in this case in, in cellular membrane. We discussed how gene expression under laser light uh, diode. It was used in the uh, diode light radiation there, and um, how. Uh, this cellular signaling uh, pathway works. Um, and uh, the taking together uh, uh, all, all this knowledge about uh, cellular uh, signaling pathways, um, it uh, shows you that um, after very short time in radiation, Usually in cellular work, some tens of uh, uh, seconds, uh, you get uh, a cellular response in organelles which do not contain chromophores. It, um, like uh, in, in case of DNA synthesis, I started my uh, talk. It shows that uh, there must be a cellular signaling pathway, and all all, all, all this it explains the spatial and temporal separation of, uh, of events uh, in, in change of cellular metabolism after irradiation. And uh, yeah, I discussed that. I think this is the last one in, uh, in, 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 in this paper. How it works, I proposed uh, which uh, uh, components are involved in this and so on. I think I will not explain it uh, more clear, care, carefully here. But important thing is that until recently, uh, it was thought in biological sciences that the um, nucleus regulates everything in cells. Nucleus sends signals how metabolism should be how mitochondria should be work and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, signals comes from nucleus to mitochondria, from our point of view, most important thing. But it appeared now uh, that um, mitochondria also uh, are able to send uh, signals to nucleus. And uh, this light dependent uh, signalization. We call it light sensitive mitochondrial retrograde signaling. Retrograde signaling, it is a new phenomenon. It was maybe five, six years not connected with light experiments at all, but uh, people uh, started to understand that mitochondria, they are not only uh, hearing what uh, nucleus tells by the, uh, to them, but uh, they send back uh, signals. It is called retrograde signaling, and um, in in our case, uh, we are dealing with um, light sensitive uh, mitochondrial retrograde signaling. Uh, so, uh, summarizing this part of uh, of my talk. Once more, we um, uh, get alteration in redox state of respiratory chain uh, under irradiation. Uh, then we get alteration in redox state of cytoplasm. Um, there are many parameters which uh, have been measured. I would like to emphasize uh, the work of uh, Professor Passarella in Paris. He is in field uh, beginning from 
I think in, from 80s, early 80s, and he has done a lot of work in, 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 in this field. And now, a little bit later results. Again, technology is uh, advanced, is it, um, and uh, now, uh, uh, not now, 10 years at least, there are possibilities uh, to measure in living cells uh, metabolic changes just in real time scale. Uh, this work was uh, done in, uh, in, in Iraq, Iraq Heraclayton, and um, this is Greece uh, work, and uh, they showed first time uh, uh, until that experiment people were speaking 10 or 20 years oh there are pH signaling in fibroblasts or in cells and everything but nobody has uh, measured th uh, has not measured that in real time scale and you see there is an initial cell they irradiated it with uh, 647 after uh, three minutes you see changes there Maximum is after six minutes, after irradiation, and then you get uh, a process getting down. And uh, it is, uh, of course, this is work is very important uh, point of view explaining mechanisms, but it all, all also shows uh, that um, you remember all those toes uh, dependencies, they are bell-shaped. And uh, tens and tens of years, people have recorded those, and everybody knows this, those dependencies like, like this, for example, or time dependencies. And um, this first time, you see that in, 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 in real uh, time scale. And the same thing about uh, calcium peaks. Uh, the same group is published in, in, in the same paper. Uh, calcium peaks, uh, this is a, a thing which has been speculated uh, tens and tens of years and uh, in different, um, not speak about this. And again, this um, work, it uh, really demonstrates in real time scale that those two peaks, initial peaks, one uh, after 60 seconds after irradiation, second one 240 seconds, and there are four, four peaks also somewhere, uh, somewhere here. Uh, so, and again, this, this is a great thing, and uh, very nice experiment, very nicely performed. Uh, there were only some examples I showed you about um, this light-activated mitochondrial cellular signaling pathway, but uh, it is now certain that this way in cellular biology, it exists. And um, in, in this case, respiratory chain, it acts, acts not only as signal generator, it is also signal transducer. Uh, there are some important points I would like to emphasize uh, that different photoresponses of cells, they can be controlled by identical photoacceptor, which is uh, cytochrome C oxidase. But uh, in, in, in next steps after this, in, in photosignal transduction change, the differences appear and uh, those uh, secondary reactions, as I call them, they can be uh, greatly different. Uh, they can happen in transcription level. Uh, there are at least two transcription factor, factors uh, which are measured uh, after irradiation. And um, the principle is that this way how the photosignal is converted into cell language into ion gradients, redox, and electrical potential inside of cells, it is the same. Uh, but um, these uh, effects of behavior of cell res cellular response, they can be different, and it, it depends on 
uh, on um, transduction of, of light signal in cellular metabolism pathways. And uh, I always uh, have spoken out that this is an universal photobiological mechanism via mitochondria, mitochondria modulation of cellular redox state. Here are these um, primary reactions with cytochrome C oxidase. And after that, modulation of physiological activity of, of a cell. Uh, and um, it works in practically in all cells which have mitochondria. And very recently, a few weeks ago, I have pe we performed experiments with um, uh, some spermatozoids of um, uh, in marine animals, and uh, it, it, you can see in a uh, microscope how uh, those cells are uh, moving faster and, uh, and so on and so forth, at least by three parameters. So, and um, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, examples I, I spoke. Uh, this is enhancement of proliferation of culture, cu cultured cells. I spoke about this. But uh, there are examples um, connected uh, with alteration of peating frequency in excitable cells and redox priming of lymphocytes. Oh, 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 those Um, uh, and uh, insofar as I, s uh, as I have some more time, I will give you some um, exa uh, examples. This is my uh, favorite example. Look at this. Uh, it is uh, uh, this work is performed was performed um, in uh, France in '47. And it was forgotten uh, for many years. And uh, they, those people irradiated um, uh, helix myocardium with uh, different wavelengths. And uh, they got modifications of period and ampli amplitude in electrograms. But uh, they uh, were not uh, able to interpret it. And uh, they, they, yeah, they work with worked with monochromatic light, with monochromator. And um, it, it is a nice work. Yeah. I forgot one was professor of SEMS and one was uh, her student, but uh, who, who was who, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, so uh, there was a new wave of experiments uh, when um, uh, uh, Microirradiation technique was developed. There are some classical works of Michael Perns from California, for example, Christian Salé from Paris. Uh, and they studied, uh, 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 because uh, at that time lasers were uh, new devices and all biologists, they wanted to try and uh, find out what happens. And um, uh, in, in case of uh, those venti venti ventricular cells, they got activation uh, uh, in uh, contractibility and electrical activity of uh, those cells. But uh, again, they didn't know uh, the mechanism and so. And uh, uh, Christian Salé, I have, he, he, he has pensioned now a long time, but uh, I was happy to speak. Uh, with him and discuss those things. And uh, he was a very open-minded person about uh, uh, this laser uh, biostimulation and laser therapy things um, also. Uh, one uh, more thing from Christian Salé, uh, changing in peating frequency, published in, in 79. And uh, this is our own work. We uh, uh, used a um, patch, so called. It was then new, and everybody wanted to use this new technique. And uh, we were among those <laughs> also the so called uh, uh, patch clamp technique. And um, we measured um, uh, 
opening frequency of uh, background single channels uh, in uh, cardiomyocytes and some other types of cells. And, uh, uh, and in, in this case, when the cellular membrane was uh, not uh, um, uh, erupted, it was whole, cell was whole, we got uh, responses in, 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 in different uh, neurons and cardiomyocytes. Uh, but again, we were, we were not very heavily involved in this, so we were not able to interpret this, and so, uh, but at least uh, we, we, we were able to show that laser light suppresses opening of some channels in, in cell membrane under irradiation with helium-neon laser. And um, yeah, again, one or second, we, we were even able to measure the times, uh, time changes under irradiation and so. Uh, so, and uh, there is uh, one big uh, part of experiments I have been involved many years. Uh, this is mitogenic activation of human lymphocytes. Uh, uh, yeah, most work was performed with helium neon laser uh, and parallel experiments, this PHA, this is a classical activator of um, uh, lymphocytes. And at that time, we, we were able to work with human uh, blood and human lymphocytes. It, uh, it, it, it is an important uh, thing uh, because it is not so easy to get uh, human blood and, uh, and so on. It is, uh, there are strict, strict regulations in this point. And we, we found the interesting thing that uh, you saw in human lymphocyte, it is a very resting cells uh, as compared with um, other um, cells. And uh, they are not proliferating and they are, uh, there are, yeah, metabolism is different. And we have compared uh, uh, irradiated cells and um, this PHA treated cells and you have found, we found that the short term responses were similar, increasing chromatin, chromatin template activity, uh, calcium influx, expression of some genes and uh, changes in ultrastructure of um, nuclear and nucleolar um, parts in, in cells and even uh, uh, some uh, accumulation of uh, terminated RNA uh, proto-oncogene, uh, but those were similar, but we never got plus transformation in the case of irradiation. We never got uh, DNA synthesis and mitosis. Uh, we, we never got expression of genes of interleukin and uh, interleukin receptors, which are processes uh, 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 which can be measured very easily in phytohemagglutinin treated cells. But we have noticed that there is a boosting effect in case of irradiation when you uh, have a PHA, PHA treated cells and uh, you irradiate them, these uh, effects are statistically significant, significantly uh, stronger. And we then thought, oh, this should be a priming and conditioning action of uh, irradiation. And, um, and later on, uh, and in parallel, some, uh, I especially think uh, a very good way about this work, uh, those people, uh, they uh, uh, were able to get um, activation of lymphocytes also, and uh, it is rather high uh, activation, hundred, uh, till 170%. Uh, with help of irradiation. And uh, my theory was that it is some kind of redox priming which occurs um, via respiratory chain. 
then we did a big amount of work uh, and still work uh, with um, reconstruction uh, of uh, um, cellular organelles in irradiated cells. Um, this is, uh, work is done in human lymphocytes. You see in, 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 in control experiments, there are only small mitochondria in lymphocytes. But um, in irradiated cells, you see the changes in structure of mitochondria. You see uh, new giant mitochondria, which clearly shows that en en energy uh, metabolism in these cells is changing. So I sp spoke about direct effects of laser light. I spoke about proliferation, action potential in excitable cells, priming of lymphocytes, uh, production of cytokines and some other things. But all those things, they are connected with other cells in organisms when um, you irradiate a real organism, a real not only cells, and in this case you can get activation or inhibition of other cells, not in, 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 in right, by right uh, direct irradiation, but as a next step. And then um, there is one other thing uh, connected with direct, uh, direct effects when uh, this uh, phagocytosis cells are activated by radiation. You get um, reactive oxygen spaces generation activation. And in this case, again, you are able uh, to do uh, many things. We have worked in, or well, have published a lot of papers in this field and uh, found every kind of uh, dependence and uh, those dependencies and so on. And it works also in case of, of this particular enzyme, which is located in uh, cell membrane of phagocyting cells. And it is not connected with primarily with mitochondrial mechanisms. And of course, there are mechanisms um, activation connected with NO generation. Uh, and. Uh, I spoke about some aspects of this, but um, this is much more uh, bigger field. Yeah, this is one like, uh, just showing um, uh, just example about this uh, speci specialized oxidized uh, oxidized in the cellular membrane. You you see in in all all those marine and uh, uh, marine splenocytes and bone marrow, you, you are able to, um, to get activation as well. Aha, and now we are here. Ray knows this well, I think. Uh, all those red light phenomena, as I told, it was very well known. In, uh, even in last century, people used lamps and so, and I have written some reviews about those works and, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, with helium neon laser uh, and with work of Endremester, the new boom started in that field. And, uh, and uh, we uh, were working beginning from let's say 79 practically in this field and so and uh, it it uh, it um, those lasers and so it it is it it is used in uh, in many uh, in soviet U soviet times it, it in clinics everywhere you, you found those helium neon lasers because most of production of helium neon lasers of huge country of soviet union it went to medicine so, and uh, later on, um, uh, those um, uh, semiconductor lasers and so on. And, uh, yeah, and everybody knew that. And, uh, yeah, well, but then um, American people awaked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And uh, yeah, they got a uh, lot of money. Uh, Ray, Ray told about this. And uh, this, uh, they wanted to show that, oh, this is something new phenomenon. And the FDA was supporting those things. And so I remember I, I wrote also some, how to say, uh, supporting letters to this and uh, uh, to get this through of FDA and um, and so on and so forth. So uh, this um, uh, this thing was discovered in America once more, and they published. Uh, they got the money, and their, uh, this was financed by this military, this TARPA, and. Um, uh, and this device you showed us yesterday, what uh, battlefield, real battlefield device, and now they are not working in this field anymore. But I just, uh, uh, and uh, they repeated all uh, our results and so on. And I have, I know, I have met uh, Eels and I have met this Court Henry, who was the uh, main. Uh, workers are and the Juanita Anders, for example, they were involved all in, in, in this one work. And Margaret Wong Riley, um, uh, they repeated all those things in a um, uh, contemporary um, way, and uh, they found uh, many nice things. I should say that all those uh, papers, they are. Uh, published and uh, printed and published in, in very good journals and in made in a very high level. But yeah, now this uh, battlefield thing is ready and uh, they are out of field. Is that so? Uh, they are not here anymore. At least uh, at Margaret, I get only New Year cards last year. So no works anymore. Usually they sent me all all their results and things, uh, papers, and so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, very good that they teach that, and uh, it, uh, this battlefield thing is very nice one. A little bit heavy, of course. Can you imagine sol this soldiers having it in, it's how, how is it? One kilo, I think, or something. Less little. <laughs> But it is heavy, so heavy batteries. So, uh, <coughs> uh, well, let's uh, move now to conclusions. We believe that the photoacceptor is cytochrome C oxidase in, in, in part, uh, red and uh, near infrared part of uh, spectrum. Irradiates, irradiation promotes pro-oxidation conditions in um, uh, cells by activation of respiratory chain. Uh, at least there are five possible um, primary mechanisms I showed you, and I mostly spoke about uh, uh, redox activation, but there uh, should be a, a, another ones also. Uh, and uh, the main thing that occurs is, this is, I call it, crucial step. It, um, uh, it is a tra transient jump in intracellular redox state in the more oxidized direction. And uh, this cause uh, is connected with biochemical reactions of cellular signaling. And uh, this is part of all those mechanisms uh, which is understood uh, only partly, and uh, there will be much more. Uh, things in forthcoming years done. And uh, this uh, mechanism, it, uh, you irradiate, you photoacceptors are in mitochondria, you get variation of redox potential, redox state of cells, and this causes changes in psycho psychological, physiological activity of cells. And I, I spoke about proliferation about some examples about excitable cells and uh, lymphocyte, lymphocytes priming as well. And uh, I have written in this topic three books. books. This is the last one. You can buy it in internet. And uh, yeah, this explains all those things and much more. And there are clinical examples and so on. Thank you.
wonder if there is any question. Uh, yeah, biophotonsensis is a term uh, which I don't understand fully, uh, but in my knowledge, uh, this is those photons which uh, comes out uh, from uh, as a result of some reaction, chemical reaction. But I was speaking about those photons which I introduced to cells by irradiation. But biophotons, of course, they are. And yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think this is, but it is very badly understood until now how it works. Yeah, it is. But yeah, this is uh, made by electronic microscopy, and it really is. You can see that you, you, in, in your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, of course, you, you, it is very, how to say, experiment is very heavy. You treat it, and you, you cut your cell, and yeah, you reconstruct. It is a very common uh, methodology in, 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 among microscopists. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they, oh, mitochondria, they are very moving. They are very, uh, organs which can do very fastly everything. It depends on oxygen demands, so, uh, oxygen, what, what else? What? They can do that very fastly. So this kind of merging into big structures can happen from other causes also, not only life. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't remember now exactly the literature because they have done yeah, some years ago. But uh, yeah, yeah. You mentioned that 640 nanometers is used to create you know, fibroblasts. What are the benefits of that? Ah, oh, this is one step in the way pH uh, changes in in cells. One step in um, in this big reaction chain. Uh, you never know. It is many, uh, many different uh, things can happen when pH changes. Even a very, a very little change in pH of cells, it, it, uh, everything is changing. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it. yeah, yeah. Oh, we have not studied it yet. People have not studied it very carefully. It is very complicated. Clustering water? Yeah, causes a cluster in geometric uh, configurations that are active in the oxidants. I don't know. I, I, I have read this, but uh, I don't have opinion in this. Because there is no photoacceptor, there might be some other things when you work with water. Yeah, yeah. One has to st study this. This is the same thing like uh, when I started in in this um, uh, photobiome modulation, mostly people did, didn't believe that because the doses are very low. And you can do many things in cells. Uh, first, 20, uh, let's say 15, 20, 10 years, I was fighting very heavily uh, with different people who didn't believe that. And uh, how, how this, uh, I, I think biophotons. And this green light with water is the same, how to say, sort of things. If somebody appears who will study it carefully, then it is not, uh, you cannot explain it in common frames of, of knowledge right now. You, you think the, uh, the laser light effect on fibroblasts may be partly why the laser increases the wound healing, the speed of the wound healing? Oh, yeah, it is they are connected. Wound healing is a final thing. Yes. But uh, fibroblast, uh, what are reactions with fibroblast? This is the first thing. And uh, my work is connected with this very first one when photon is absorbing and, and things like that, and wound healing, of course. 
it, it works very good. We started with that, and this was messed was that because he was uh, surgeon and he, he worked with a military hospital and he has so on, so very bad wounds and so, and he started to irradiate first. First his thing was Ravi laser and then helium neon laser. Um, oh yeah, this is classical work. And Mester's uh, two sons are still alive. A green, in green part certainly is, but not in red. You you have to irradiate a long time. To put, to put it on the body directly, is there a harm in that? Uh, red light, no. We have done that. We tried it. Red. We had, uh, I, I didn't speak about this, um, because we made a clinical experiments, and our idea was that we have we have to irradiate something which are in dark, and we irradiate via endoscope uh, this ulcers here. And um, it was yeah it was done in in, in the eighties and some uh, some medical doctors defend their decrees on on this topic and so on and and really we worked with uh, cells which are not used uh, the light, and there were some very heavy. Uh, stomach ulcers, not uh, curable, practically in in in, in by chemicals, so and uh, uh, yeah 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 yeah. yeah. The green. Uh, we we didn't try that. Green is uh, you you should be more careful. And uh, uh, my purpose was that we have to do that and to prove that. Uh, and uh, because it worked in, in cells and so, and uh, we have to do that in, not in, in those cells which are used to accommodate the light, but this one, and yeah, yeah, this. And uh, this was amazing, some, uh, in, in the first, uh, uh, again, it was very difficult to gather the proper amount of patients and so, but some, uh, uh, some cells also were very, very heavy, and uh, the doctor was first time, first week after war, he was like this. Look, there is so horrible. There is so wall and, uh, around this, and it after first the radiation, this <coughs> came down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if you could uh, clarify something. In your experiments, was there a difference between coherent and non-coherent light, or was it the same effect? It's the same effect. It was my. Uh, in the 80s, we performed cellular experiments just very parallel. Yeah? That's why you are here and you are healing with light. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So why buy a laser? Yeah. <laughs> you, you buy laser. Don't buy laser. <laughs> you. you <laughs> okay, that, it, it, this is just a joke, but uh, in principle. <laughs> I, bet, I, I maybe missed something, but the results you described from fibroblasts and lymphocytes, were they from in vitro experiments or in vivo experiments? Um, uh, uh, lymphocytes. Uh, so, so we caught uh, so every early morning um, from um, transfusion station for a human, and it was. Uh, but not uh, we have not because uh, uh, there are many people who worked in vivo, not myself. I am not medical doctor and I uh, only uh, we supported some uh, experiments and I was interested in this um, stomach ulcer things just to show that uh, uh, it is the same effect and so. And will you find any differences in vivo if you treat in the morning? Oh yeah, oh yeah, there are, there are all those things. I have not done that, but even in cells I see that we try to do uh, all, all in the same time, at least, 10 o'clock in the morning or, or 12 o'clock in the morning. And of course we have seen that. And um, there, 
uh, little experiments in mice, and uh, we did. I, I didn't speak about this, and uh, oh, it even depended how uh, these mice were kept in in vivarium, in what what they were eating, and we we ourselves checked that they were properly eaten, and, and uh, because this uh, in in real organisms those effects they are very. So, yeah, yeah, variating, of course. That's why we all are different in principle. And then this is interesting thing that in some doctors has, have seen in some organisms you need a big, much higher doses than in, in, in some cases. Some people are very sensitive. I myself are very sensitive when I work a whole do day. In laboratory, I cannot sleep in, in, in the night because you get uh, uh, excitation with red light, especially when you work in microscope or so it get, gets... Uh, yeah. I have had a question for years and I hope you can shine some light on this. What year? The question is, um, if the oxygen cycle in the cell has stopped, is there a light that we can use to get it started again? But after that, you will de de be de 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 after oxygen. You, when you are not consuming oxygen, you will. So will die. <laughs> you will. <laughs> you will be dead. <laughs> and after this, you cannot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will not be able to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Ask one question: Is uh, about the cell being uh, aerobic or an anaerobic? Yeah, yeah, anaerobic cells. Yeah, they can be activated, but not so actively. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there are mm, uh, photoreceptors which uh, absorb light, and so. And even if uh, one thinks carefully, there are cells which, when oxygen is very bad, finish. They will not die, they go, go, go to glycolysis. And uh, this, this cell, they live some more time, little. <laughs> yeah. okay. Some? Oh yeah, I have not done that by myself, but there is Austrian work, Lisa Schindel and Dr. Lisa Schindel and uh, her two sons, all those are medical doctors, and they performed experiments, they immunized uh, rabbits irradiating from that point, and this is very nice work, yeah, you can do that, and sometimes I myself, when getting flu and so on, I irradiate myself from there, yeah. this point. Yeah, behind me or here. It depends what uh, vessels you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.